Studentpreneur Podcast, the podcast on students who are entrepreneurs. Get motivated and keep your energy high with stories from studentpreneurs. This week's podcast is sponsored by ID Network, a network of university associations run by studentpreneurs for studentpreneurs. If you don't have an ID Network in your uni, reach out to www.idnetwork.com.au. I D E A N E T W O R K. Welcome to episode 3. My name is Julian Marchin, entrepreneur turned PhD student. For three years, I've been studying students who are entrepreneurs, and I get told not to waste my time with them. They should just, you know, drop out of uni to build a business like uh, Jobs and Gates did, right? Well, what those people don't know is that the first thing that Jobs did after dropping out was to hang out on campus to learn what he was interested in. Each week, I bring you the best of those individuals who don't want to drop their studies while they're running their business. I call them Studentpreneur. This week, our Studentpreneur is Nish Bandara. Hi Nish, great having you today. So, you've run a business with a low six figures revenue while you were studying engineering at the University of Queensland. You're now 26 and you're studying a new startup at the iLab Accelerator where we are recording this episode and you're studying business management at Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane. Can you tell us more about yourself? Um, I come from a very traditional business background in an engineering consultancy, which was my very first business. And in that environment, I thought I learned everything there is to know about the world and, and common sense of how traditional business is done and that's how it should be done. Having spent some time in that environment and also being exposed to the startup environment as well, quickly learned that there's a lot of different ways you can do things. Um, And if you are one of the few people who can be bothered doing things differently, it's an interesting path to go down on, which we'll meet some resistance with, but it's also by far one of the most rewarding. What got you started? Uh, A book, a hobby, a passion, someone? First, um, my father started an engineering consultancy Mm -hmm. um, in the very end of his career as well. So he'd been working um, for various firms and governments into his um, late 50s. And then I think he got frustrated with that and decided to start his own firm. And it was a very small one. And I took a small role in that. Yeah. Um, as a family member, not as an employee, to, to help him run things. Um, in that, there were a lot of disagreements I had with him. With, um, your, with, with your dad? With my dad, <laughs> yeah. Um, we had... So I was in uni at the time, first, first year engineering degree. Um, and I saw a lot of things that I disagreed with, that the way he ran the business, the way that certain customers were treated us and the way we treated them, um, just simple operational issues. I did not think were the correct way of going about things. And I suggested some changes to be made, which turns out in family businesses, it doesn't actually work, which led to a deterioration of our personal relationship. That's bad. Well, at least you said what you were thinking. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, look, it, it came, there was a lot of headbutting. And one day we sat down and we realized it wasn't worth the costs of our relationship mm. as father and son to have that happening. Yeah. Um, so we decided that he'd continue with what he was doing yeah. and I, I would not take part in his business anymore. But you will still have a family. <laughs> part of the family. So we, we, we saved the family, uh, not so much the business. Um, so I thought, okay, that's fine. I'll do the logical thing, finish uni, I'll get a job. Like everyone else. Like everyone else, yeah. And, and, and look, that feels great because it's safe, you know. It feels safe to graduate uni and you feel like you're going to get a job on the other end. Reality is, engineers, that's not what happens. You graduate and you spend about 18 months unemployed, mm. at which point you'll take pretty much anything that comes your way. So I'm kind of glad that's what didn't happen. Um, anyway, so during that time, I thought, okay, I'll just get a part-time job to support myself. I moved out of home and so forth, um, g- becoming independent and growing up and getting out in the world. And for about six months, I tried to get a job and I couldn't. And I was applying for, you know, a Coles checkouts, McDonald's, a medical yep. reception, just all over. So basically anything. Yeah, really, yeah. really basic jobs, really basic jobs. Yeah. Um, which I had no issue with doing because mm-hmm. I was literally an entry-level employee. And, and, you know, I had a fairly good academic record at school and at uni. Um, not the top 
but not the bottom either. Mm-hmm. So above average, enough to get enough to uni um, and engineering. But yeah, couldn't couldn't get a single job. And then my friend Chris, um, he started a phone repair company, and that seemed to be an interesting thing he was doing because he was in much the same boat I was. Yeah. You know, in uni we were studying together. Neither of us could get jobs. We just couldn't. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, anywhere from Coles to Telstra to a fast food joint, um, it just didn't happen. Yeah. And then he started his phone repair business. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could do something similar? So that's the example of your friend, Chris Drake, whom we had in our first episode that gave you that little extra push to do it. I would have never thought to start a business if I had not seen one of my peers do it. Mm. Um, because it is, you, you don't get a stimuli for that from anywhere or no, encouragement. No, 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 like right. at uni, no, you do your degree, you get a job. <laughs> Family, same thing. You do well at uni, you get a job. Society, you do well at uni, you get a job. Um, not that it's a bad thing, but that's literally all you're told. You have... Yes, the only word we're taught that exists. Yeah. Um, and that's the part that I wanted to go down. But I saw someone else bucking it and I thought, no, look, it doesn't seem that hard. I'll give it a go. Mm-hmm. So one day I decided I would try and start my own engineering business, which I thought was going to be a complete disaster okay. because I had literally no idea what I was doing. <laughs> just none. And I mean, engineering itself is, is a massive topic, but there was this one thing, one tiny thing that um, my dad's firm and a lot of other firms in Brisbane were doing, which were inspections for houses. Um, so, so what you had experience at doing? Right, before, yeah. yeah. So for like three years, mm-hmm. I would follow my dad around to do these inspections and sit there. And I would write the reports with him. Yeah. Um, so I, so you did learn something with him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There was there was definitely technical knowledge gained. Mm. Um, far more than I learned at uni, my God. Um, because I was very in-depth with a very practical application of one area of engineering. Um, not to say that engineering, you don't learn anything at uni, of course you do. But once you get out into the workforce, you know, you get really into it. I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do that one little thing, you know, house inspections. So these are people, when they buy a house, there's some sort of failure in that, you know, there's a crack in the walls oh, okay, or, yeah. or something on that nature. And uh, they'll have a building and pest report done. And in that report, it'll say you need to seek the advice of an engineer. And from there, an engineer will literally go out on site, have a look, and then give a preliminary indication of what the problem is and what to do next. Um, and my dad's firm did a whole bunch of those, and I thought I'd try that little one thing. Yeah. So um, I asked my dad if I could actually use his staff for <laughs> for the job, um, just to give it a go, and he said it's fine because good. So he let you try your ID. Yeah, I mean because the primary issue that we had actually was the direction. Um, the businesses were going in. So I wanted to focus more on residential and small commercial work, Mm -hmm. whereas he wanted to go down the traditional path of infrastructure and mining and so forth. And we all know what happened with mining projects because they all died off, um, which is like a little bit of insight I had, I thought. Um, So yeah, I I wanted to go a completely different direction in the market to what they did. So he felt no threat from me, obviously, and he's my dad, so he didn't really care. And I started advertising, you know, I started out so bad. So I'd make cold phone calls to architects and so forth. Did not go well. Um, I've always been a terrible salesperson. Yeah. I just, I am so bad at it. I can't convince people to do stuff like that. Um, because it turns out I really hate hard sales. Yeah. I much prefer to sell on value. And then, you know, Chris was doing some Google AdWords advertising and SEO. Uh-huh. Seemed to be going pretty well. So I'm like, oh, look, I'll just give that a go as well. Um, <laughs> Let's try this. Yeah. And it, it's very inexpensive mm. to, to test and learn. And sh- someone could show you how to, how to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you can reach a lot of people if you do it properly and for not very much money. Started doing that. And then my phone started ringing and people were asking for this one little oh, service. Oh, customers. Yes. Customers started <laughs> ringing within about two weeks of running the ad campaigns. I mean, it's kind of scary. You're sitting there and you're spending a couple hundred dollars every week on advertising and literally nothing is happening. Yeah. It's absolutely terrifying. But then, you know, you, you have to test it. Yeah. You have to give it some time. And yeah, people started calling. And I remember one day I was leaving uni while I was driving and then my phone rang, I pulled over and it was a customer who wanted a job done. Mm-hmm. And we booked it in. And then I sent my dad's engineer out there and the job was done. And I'd earned my $500. $500? For $500 for... <laughs> 
about five minutes on the phone yep. and an hour of the engineer's time. So I think the margin on that was about um, $350, $400. Nice. In, in profit. Nice. First first call, first profit. And it just kind of snowballed from there. You but know, all your calls were like this? Yeah. Yeah, Jeez. so it started out really small and, you know, getting one customer a week and then suddenly we're getting two customers a week, then three, and then four. And then from, you know, giving these inspections and reports, I could start offering designs. Yeah, so from yeah. there, I actually took one of the engineers away from my dad because at the time, his, engineer, his business started to really struggle because the industry had changed. So mm. I'd had established mine to fit that change. Yep. Um, whereas unfortunately he did not kind yeah, of went yeah. the other way. And that's actually very common for a lot of engineering firms, mm. um, not to see that happen. And, um, look, then I hired, hired a couple of guys full time and, it, well, um, you, were, you were on your, on your way. Yeah. And then did that for three years. Nice. Three years. So, so it seems that what happened is, I mean, you learn when you were uh, working with your dad and then you, you realize you saw something in the market, you wanted to act on it and you couldn't. And then. You saw the little the motivation of someone else doing what they wanted to do and helped you out on doing some um, Google ads and and then you were you were gone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the actual technicalities of starting and running a business isn't actually very difficult. It's mm-hmm. not to say it's easy, but it's not not way near as challenging as anyone would think. The hardest part is getting the motivation to do it um, and being aware that that is an option and actually following through with it. That's the most difficult part. So uh, you've transferred your skill from one business to another, and now you have a, you have you're running a brand new business now. Can you explain what it is, and sure. are you transferring knowledge from the previous? One? So currently, I'm working on um, a startup called Instant Work, based here out of iLab Accelerator in Brisbane. Um, what that does is actually completely different to the engineering product a service. It's a software product, and what it does is automates business processes for cloud-based applications, mm-hmm. so people can get their work done instantly, as the name suggests. Um, and look, that that business came out of the frustrations I had inside the engineering one. Inside so, your own business. Inside my own business. Yeah. So in the engineering business, having you know three or four staff working with me and working on multiple projects got very frustrated with the fact that we would spend between a quarter and a third of our day doing admin work. Which is a very meaningful task. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) And, you know, if you're you're not doing that, you're you're losing money. You You need to build for hours. Yeah, Yeah, like you have to do it, but it's a a drain. So, um, I mean, we had had zero, we had project management software, we had CRMs, we we were up to date with our technology and I made sure we were. Um, but one of the biggest issues is they don't really interact with each other that well. Um, so you'll have information come in by email. You'll have to pack that inf- unpack that information from how the client has sent it to you, package it again and store it in the correct place. So customer details in my CRM, mm-hmm. project details in my document management system, quotes in zero and so forth. And everything becomes very fragmented. And when you need to get an output, so if I need to give a customer a potential customer a quote, or if I need to give them a part of a project, that individual tiny admin task would take between a quarter and a third of the day in aggregate all across the business. And looked into what was available out there. Currently, there is a level of application integration um, with Zapier and and, um, Sasu and so forth. But all they do is take information very micro pieces of information from one service to another and keep them in sync, which I think is a great start because we actually utilized a lot of those services yeah. to try and speed up the process. Um, but it didn't really have the impact that I wanted it to yeah. because at the end of the day, all these tasks are similar actions done slightly differently. Yeah. So there's no reason for it not to be automated. So you're thinking about a business while you're you're running your own business. Yes. How did you jump from one to, the, to another? Look, it, it was it was a scary jump. Um, because I I thought I could do both at the same time, of course. but <laughs> but no, it turns out that's actually crazy. Um, this, the engineering business was you know it was sixty hours a week at least, yeah. um, and then building a startup is even harder than that. Yeah. So um, I actually decided to close my engineering business down yeah. in order to pursue this project. Yeah. Um, 
I should put the caveat in that I also hated my engineering business very quickly. <laughs> um, after having done it for three years, three years yeah. I realized that is not what I wanted to be doing yeah. for the rest of my life. Um, I'm sure certain people like the engineering space. I am not one of them. Yeah. And there's a lot. The, the biggest issue I had with it was how limited the growth is. For me to build that business, it would be very cash intensive. Yeah. Um, and it would require so much of my life that I did not want to give up quite yet. <laughs> and I'm, I'm becoming entrenched in an environment that is very traditional and the entire world is moving at a pace that professional services doesn't seem to be able to keep up with. It, it seems that you're talking about like a lot of work hour and, and an environment, and but you were also going to uni. How did you manage uni and your business businesses <laughs> yeah look it was it was challenging i was very fortunate to be able to change from uh, another university to qut um, mm -hmm. at gardens point who have a very flexible nice. timetabling system yeah. so i i was doing a full course load of a double degree engineering civil engineering and business um, management and i was at uni two days a week wow two days a week Full load, full double load. degree. That's right. The, two days. The timetable is spread out very nicely. There's plenty of classes to choose from. Yeah. Um, it made it a lot easier. And I found the academic staff were a lot more accommodating for life circumstances. For <laughs> life circumstances saying, what, you're running your business or your grandmother died 30 times? <laughs> um, look, I think there's a lot of improvement when it comes to, you know, dealing with your business and helping students okay. support you know, so business kind of jobs. There's definitely a room, a lot of room, a lot okay. of room for that happening. But I found that QUT was more accommodating than the other university. The university yeah. yeah um, they seem to have a better understanding of the demands of being a student yeah. and having another life to deal another with. Life, yeah. um, that said, you do need to be able to prioritize properly. And look, I, I failed some subjects. I, yeah. I did. It was not always smooth sailing. Um, it's easy to get wrapped up in the business that you're running because yeah. it becomes your entire life. Yeah. And it, it's kind of selfish as well because you start seeing your business make money. That's right. And you <laughs> like earning more than some of the lecturers there. <laughs> and, you know, when you're young, that's like everything in the yeah. world. And, and, and you kind of lose sight of the greater greater goals. Yeah. Um, so, look, it's, it's not an easy, easy task to yeah. juggle a business and uni, but nothing rewarding is easy either how, how do you see um, your learning like did you learn from uni or did you learn from books podcasts people how did you learn look learning by doing so um, I will be honest at university not a huge amount of learning there um, with the business degree yeah um, actually no learning there with the business degree apart oh, from on. one <laughs> I think I had an accounting course that was actually quite useful okay um, and an economics course but everything else was a little bit of a disaster yeah. Uh, engineering yeah look you learn the basics of engineering that's fine but that's not my job anymore yeah. um, everything else has been doing so jumping ahead first into a business has been the best learning experience I've ever had yeah. it's been guided by um, iLab and has been guided by the mentors I have. So we you have here. Accelerator. That's right. Mentors. Um, and River City Labs and the mentors available there. They do give you a good idea of the path that you should be following. Um, but the actual learnings you, when you execute on those ideas, that's when you learn. So stuff like marketing, you just start marketing and then you look at how you can improve it. You look up all resources available to you. You search Google, you search, you know, various sources like lynda.com or Khan Academy and your peers as well you know there's a the internet is your oyster there's everything you ever need on there um and you can measure your success so you can tell if you're learning or not yeah. you're either doing good or you're doing bad so yeah. for example if you're doing marketing you're either getting customers or you're not it's a very simple measure to figure out if you're doing it or not so if you're doing something wrong you know straight away and right now i'm doing a whole bunch of work to do with analytics i'm not I've not had any experience with statistics before yeah. or data analysis, but you get in there and you learn. You, you mentioned uh, lynda.com. Have you used um, that service often? I've only been a member for about a month and a half now, but it has been by far the best learning resource I've ever come across. Um, the video content there is very clear, uh, very well structured, and it teaches you the fundamentals before the specifics. 
Um, so right now, one of my biggest weaknesses in my business is actually the technology development. I have developers to do that for me, but I need to take a, a better understanding on what's yeah. going on there. Um, there's about you know half a dozen different websites you can go to to learn how to code, and all of them will let you pick a certain language, and it will just start to let you code on that. So you know you'll you'll make a small application that does a small set of functions, and you learn about that specific language and what you can do with that language. But the reality of technology and software and web development is that you have about 40 different parts come together to work as one to reach an outcome. So you have an ecosystem, you have an architecture of a different set of tools that really need to come together for something to work. That sounds scary. Yeah, it's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> and, if, and if you don't have the basic understanding of what those parts are yeah. and how they interact, learning a specific language is not going to help you. Mm. Um, and Linda has been the only resource that has let me get a start on that. Get, so get learn the fundamentals. That's right, the fundamentals um, and the architecture behind programming and development. And I watch one of those videos at least um, once every two or three days. Yeah. And it's really helping me communicate with the tech team about where we're going and for me to understand as well. So while I still can't contribute to the specific actions that they're doing, I have a far better understanding of where we are. Yeah. And I think if anyone wants to be a better developer or anyone wants to be a developer or a software engineer, she really needs to focus on getting the fundamentals right first on how the parts look and how they should come together um, and then move on to the languages. Great. Well, I think uh, Linda.com can be accessed on a lot of university website for free for, uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, it's free, so use it. We, I think we talked about the support, the, the mentors, the iLab, um, the community already. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to add anything about it? Look, um, iLab has been pretty much instrumental in okay. where my life has gone. Um, that sounds like a crazy thing to say, but it's true. So when I was running my engineering business, um, I had an idea for a terrible services delivery online business um, that iLab provided me with the space for so no funding it was in the incubate program okay. where you're given access to the space the facilities and also the mentors and the peers and during the time that I did that I was exposed to a world of business completely new and completely exciting compared to what I was doing and a lot of mentors and an environment that really fostered me as a person um, so being involved at iLab here and also River City Labs in Brisbane, that environment and the people there and the mentors there have really helped me come where I am today. Cool. So, so I will be of accelerators. Absolutely. We could be completely lost without them. If I didn't have, didn't have this environment, I would have probably stop running the business anyway because up, yeah. and I would have probably gone and got a job again to be honest a job yes a job a job uh. <laughs> all right uh, that's a uh, pretty good um, support to have um, an accelerator last question um, do you want to share with us um, an example of one of your tough time on your journey look when you run a business it can get very lonely I'm very lucky that I have a support environment around me with iLab and River City Labs, but still it does become very lonely yeah. and it can be difficult to keep yourself motivated. Um, there are certain times when you feel like it's all a complete failure. Often when I go to bed, I am completely freaking out thinking, oh my God, what have I done? What am I doing? Um, uh, this is crazy. Yeah. I should just take yeah. the safe option of getting a job and but continuing. Yes, the safe option of the getting a job. Exactly. <laughs> but because you're just in this unknown no man's land territory. It's, it's absolutely yeah. terrifying. Um, and, you know, there are some days where you feel quite down, but it's not long that passes. You realize, wait, this is awesome. This is, yeah. you, you're doing something crazy. The reward that you have is so much better. Yeah. Because, I mean, if I wasn't doing this, I don't know what else I'd be doing. I mean, yes. there's, there's no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, if I didn't do it, I'd still not have any success anyway. So yeah. I'd just be, you know, another person dealing with office politics and so forth, yeah. which I don't really care for at all. Um, so yeah, look, that, that it can be hard to stay motivated if you don't have support around you. So definitely make sure, you know, you stay in contact with the peers who might be running their own businesses, any mentor or support networks you have. Yeah. They're, they're your lifeline. Excellent. That's. I think that's that's very important because um, that's, a lot of people don't talk about it, but that's a day-to-day -day reality. So. 
Yeah, it, it can be very, very demoralizing sometimes when you're the only person in a certain environment trying to do something completely crazy by most people's standards. Um, so you look, even student societies are fantastic. So we've got the Idea Network here at QUT yep, and UQ. Yep, um, and being a part of that community does really help you stay motivated and yep. your motivation rubs off on others as well. That's so right. it motivates other people to do stuff and it really builds the environment and the ecosystem of student entrepreneurs yeah. and entrepreneurship in general and keep your energy up absolutely and you move a lot faster when you're happier Definitely. all right what do you need right now in your venture help mentor staff what, what do you need um, right now we need to build out our team so at this moment it's me um and david my developer and we are building a product with very high ambitions and goals and it's completely different to what's existing on the market but it won't be for long if we don't get our yeah. product developed quickly. So someone's going to come and do the same thing we are, but we need to be the first. Yeah. So I'm always, always on the lookout for um, developers to join the team. That's cool. Uh, how, how can we? How can they reach you? Uh, they can get me at nish n i s h at nish n i s h bandara b a n d a r a dot com dot au. Excellent. Cool. Uh, yep. Thank you very much, Nish. No worries. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Time for a quick wrap up. Each student entrepreneur story is different, and what works for some people doesn't work for others. However, I'd like to point out a few things in Nish's journey that are similar to a lot of student entrepreneurs I have interviewed for my research. He started learning business in his family business, then he saw an opportunity and acted on it, even if his dad was again against it at first. Nish makes an essential point about motivation and how the journey of a student entrepreneur can seem quite lonely. This is one of the key reasons why I started this podcast to begin with. Nish surrounded himself with various communities to create a supporting environment where you exchange motivation with each other. Entrepreneurship associations such as ID Network, iLab Accelerators, and a mentor. Make sure you surround yourself with such a supporting community. Thank you so much for your time, Nish, and all the best in your adventure. If you enjoyed this podcast, please review us on iTunes with 5 stars, and I'll thank you in upcoming episodes. Catch next episode of Student Entrepreneur on Wednesday next week. Meanwhile, keep breaking the stereotype and the mindset.